So a couple of weeks ago, I've shown you how you could use the Python library called the PyCaret, which is a low-code machine learning library in Python. And the example dataset that I've shown you was the Iris dataset. And so perhaps you're wondering, what if you have your own dataset and you would like to use that for your machine learning model building in PyCaret? So the advantage of using PyCaret is that it allows you to quickly prototype machine learning models, meaning that you could quickly generate machine learning models based on several algorithms. For example, if you're using classification or if you're using regression, then you could pretty much use all of the learning algorithms that are available from scikit-learn and other packages such as XGBoost or CatBoost. And so in my daytime job as an associate professor of bioinformatics, I also do a lot of research and as part of doing research, we have to explore various machine learning algorithms. And traditionally, if we were to custom code machine learning pipelines in Python using scikit-learn, that would pretty much take us maybe a couple of hours. But by using PyCaret, this could pretty much be compressed in only a couple of minutes. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you could quickly generate machine learning models in PyCaret. And so the data set that we're going to be using today, which is particularly based on the molecular Killer solubility. And so the data set was originally published in one of the journals by the American Chemical Society. And so today we're going to reproduce that work. And instead of using only linear regression, we're also going to be using several machine learning algorithms provided by the automated pipeline of PyCaret. And so the links to both of these videos that I have mentioned will be provided up and below in the description. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to split the Jupyter Notebook file into two. And the first one will be called part 2.1. And the second one will be called part 2.2. And so in part 2.1, we're going to be generating the molecular descriptor file, which has also been covered in the previous video. But today we're going to do that very rapidly. And so if you would like to have a in-depth discussion or explanation of what each line of code is doing, then you want to refer to that previous video. And so please find the link up and below. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to install Conda and the libraries. And so this should take a couple of minutes. And as previously shown in the prior video, we're using the Delani solubility data set. And the original paper is provided in this link. And the original link to the data set is provided in this link as well in 2.1. And so I have already downloaded the data set onto the GitHub of the data professor. And so the links will be in here. And so we could directly read it in using pandas. And so thanks to Boris for suggesting the use of the URL directly in the read CSV function of pandas. Okay, let's have a look. It's currently installing. Okay, so we're installing Conda, Python 3.7, and we're also installing RDKit. And so RDKit will allow us to compute molecular descriptors. And so this is a cheminformatic Python library. And if you are curious about RDKit, this library is only available on Python. So if you're using R, then you want to give this package a try. And, and so perhaps it is one of the reasons for using Python for chem informatics and vice versa. There are packages only available for R and so to each their own. So some library are in Python, some library are only exclusively on R. And so that is why I'm using both languages. Okay, so let's compute the descriptors. Oh, okay, we have to define this first. Read in the data set right here. Create the molecular descriptor. Okay. So lengthier explanation will be provided in the previous video as mentioned. So here we're just computing the descriptors. And we're splitting the X and Y matrices. looking at the distribution and then combining it back in. And then we're gonna write it out into a CSV file. And this CSV file will be provided on the GitHub of Data Professor. So I have shown you this steps just in case that you would like to try this on your own chemical library. Okay, so we have already created the file and I'm gonna show you the link to this file, which we are going to be using for part 2.2. Okay, so it's right here, Delani solubility with descriptors. So the first one, Delani.csv, let me show you. 
So this will contain the raw data. It's going to contain the name of the compounds, the measured solubility, the predicted solubility from the paper using the linear regression, and the SMILES notation. And the SMILES notation will be chemical information in the one dimension. And so the descriptor calculating software in RDKit library will be using the SMILES notation as the input. Okay, and then it will generate a set of molecular descriptor, which will be shown here. So it's going to generate descriptors such as log P, molecular weight, number of rotatable bonds, aromatic proportion, and log S is the experimental values. And so as noted previously in the prior video, the aromatic proportion descriptor was generated using a custom function. Okay, so this is the data set we're going to be using for part 2.2. All right, so let's start by installing pi carrots. In a couple of seconds, it will finish installation. All right, so let's load in the PyCarrot library for regression. And then we're going to import pandas as PD. And this is the link to the solubility data set I've mentioned, along with the molecular descriptors that were calculated. And let's have a brief look. OK, so it's the same data set that I've previously mentioned. So it has five columns and 1,144 rows. All right, so let's start with the model building. So the first step is, okay, so I have already run the above. So why don't I delete this because I have already included here, okay? And then we're going to set up the model. Let's run it. And so here we specify the name of the data set, which is called data set here because we read it in as a data set data frame. And then we're going to specify the target, which is log S. And so log S is right here, the column called log S. So this is the Y variable that we will be predicting. And the rest will be used as the X variable. Okay, and notice that this is a simple pandas data frame. And so we just read it in directly from the CSV file. And then we're using it immediately in the setup function of PyCaret. And so here we're specifying the training set size to be 80%. Okay, and we're making it silent equal to true so that we don't see any of the messages. Okay, and let's proceed. So the subsequent blocks of code here will be using the training set, which is the 80%. And then finally, at the very end of this notebook, I'm going to be using the trained model of the 80% in order to be testing it on the 20%, okay? So if you're new to machine learning and data science, then I have created a simple visual guide to how to build a machine learning model. So that article was published on Medium in Towards Data Science. And so I'm going to provide you the link in the video description as well. And so that article will be a gentle introduction to the field of machine learning and data science. Okay, so let's continue. Hit on this cell, compare models. So as I mentioned previously, we're going to be building several machine learning algorithms model that are provided by Scikit-Learn, by CatBoost, by XGBoost. And so this is simply performed in only one line of code made possible by PyCaret. And imagine if you were to code this manually, all of these 21 models, then it's going to take you a couple of minutes. If not minutes, then a couple of hours, at least a few hours. Okay, so this is very conveniently done for you. All right, so let's have a look here. So here we see that the best model is provided by the extra tree regression. And this gives us a R square of 0 0.879. And let's compare that to the previous one that we have built. Let's go to code, go to Python. And then it is the chem informatics predicting solubility. And so this is from the previous video. All right, so let's have a look. So the R square here is, it's the R square on the test set. Right here, R square on the training set is 77, 0 0.77. And the one provided today is 0 0.879, a significant boost to the model performance. And so we're going to continue further with the ET regression. 
Okay, and coming in in second place is Random Forest. And so as noted in one of the prior podcasts, I've mentioned that Random Forest was one of my favorite learning algorithms. And actually, without using PyCaret, I wouldn't have known that extra tree regression would have performed better than Random Forest. And so this gives us fresh perspective in trying out new algorithms as well. Okay, and so here we're going to continue to use the ET algorithm, which is the best performing one. And it's abbreviated right here as ET. And so I'm going to define it ET equals to create underscore model and then ET. Let's run it. Okay, and here we have a performance table showing all of the performance metric for the 10 cross validation. And the mean value from the 10 cross validation is shown here along with the standard deviation. So as you can see, generally it is 0 0.8793. Same as above. Let's tune the model. So by tuning the model, we're going to optimize the parameters and let's see whether the performance will increase. Okay, so this should take a couple of moments. And so here we have set the number of iterations to be 50 and we're going to use the mean absolute error as the fitness function. And so we're seeing that the R square is increasing in some of the fold. Okay, and then from the 10 cross validation, we saw that the performance increased slightly to 0 0.8854. And so it was previously 8793 and it is now 8854. So this is the detail from the trained model. And so for reproducibility, you might want to set the random state to be 7903 in order for it to give you the same results here. Okay, so now comes the fun part. Let's have a look at the various plots for the models. So let's have a look at the residuals. And we're going to use the plot model function. And the input argument here will be the name of the model, et, comma, the residuals. And so imagine creating this manually using Seaborn or Matplotlib. So that might take you a couple of hours to do so. Okay, and let's have a look at the prediction error plot. Okay, so the scatter plot of the actual value and the predicted value. Cook's distance plot. So for outlier detection. Recursive feature selection. And so in the background, we're going to run the other one as well. All right, here. So this is the recursive feature selection. So it is shown here that out of the four molecular descriptors, it is shown here that the use of only two feature could provide in excess of 0 0.85 for the R square. And that the use of the remaining two descriptor will slightly improve the performance of the prediction. Okay, so that's something interesting to see. And let's have a look at the learning curve. So the blue curve you see here are the training score and the green will be the cross validated score. Validation curve comparing the training score versus the cross validation score. And the manifold learning plot using four features and the feature importance. So we can see here that the log P is the highly ranked feature followed by the molecular weight, aromatic proportion, and rotatable bonds. And so probably the two feature are log P and molecular weight from the above plot here, right here. Number of feature to be two. And so these are the hyperparameters of the model. Number of estimators, 100. Random state, 7903. And this is the hyperparameter of the tuned model. So max depth 40. Number of estimator has been changed to 280. And the random state is the same at 7903. Okay, and here is the showing all the plots. So you could click on each of these panel and it will show us. But some of them were not working. Or maybe it's taking some time to run. So let's continue model interpretation. So the great thing I like about this package is the nice interpretation provided by the shape library. And so here we're seeing the contribution of the features to the model performance. And so as previously shown above, 
Generally, the feature importance plot that we will be seeing will provide us only the information about which one was the most important. And so an important point to note here is that whenever we make a feature importance plot, we're going to see which feature are the most important. For example, we could see that mode lock P provided the most variable importance, followed by mode weight, aromatic proportion, and number of rotatable bonds. But what we're not seeing is that how are they contributing to the model? For example, if we have two classes class A and class B, active compound and inactive compound. And so we can see that log P is contributing the most, but are they contributing the most to the active compound or are they contributing the most to the inactive compound? Okay, and so with the shape package here, we're going to see the contribution of each feature by looking at the shape value here, okay, whether it is tending toward the negative or whether it is tending toward the positive, okay? And let's have a look further. Okay, this is the correlation plot. And let's have a look here at the recent plot at the observation level. And so this recent plot, which is called by PyCaret, and it is better known as the forest plot, which is termed by the shape library. And the plot will essentially describe the push and pull effect that each of the individual feature used to build the model has on the base value of the prediction. So the base value of the prediction, let's think of it as kind of like the y-intercept. So y-intercept could be thought of as the base value. For example, if you're equation is y equals to 5x plus 5 and so the base value will be 5 and the coefficient value 5x that will be the feature importance okay so for a simple linear regression there's no problem in interpreting at which direction does each feature has on the prediction of the model whether it has a positive effect or a negative effect which we could have a look at the coefficient values whether it is positive or negative or whether the value has high magnitude or low magnitude so high magnitude meaning it'll have higher value for the coefficient and lower magnitude, it will have lower value for the coefficient. And so the force plot will beautifully show you that in this plot. So the base value here is 6. So the base value here is minus 6.72. And we could see that all of the descriptor here are making the value lower. Okay, and so different model will be using different features in different ways. Okay, and so here we're going to see that the four feature are pushing the base value lower. So it's having a negative effect toward the output value prediction. And so for this particular model, it is showing that all of the four descriptors are having a negative effect on the output value. So it is pushing the value to be lower from the base value of minus 6.72. So for another data set, using other algorithms, it might be the case that some descriptors are pushing it higher, some descriptors are pushing it lower, okay? Okay, and so that's all for the testing on the 80% subset. And now we're going to use the 80% model and making a prediction on the holdout or the left out 20% subset. And so let's do that using the predict model code. And so we're going to see that the performance on the test set or the 20% is 0 0.8671. And so let's have a look at some of the predicted output here. So here are the label, which is the predicted value, and the log S are the experimental values. Okay, so the prediction are pretty good, right? The actual value is minus 5.47, predicted to be minus 5.08, minus 2.18, predicted to be minus 1.9772. Okay, and so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.